Hello students, I'd like to introduce to you the new LDS Seminaries and Institutes app to help you through your progress in seminary towards graduation and as well as an institute. Go ahead and go to Google Play or go to iTunes and type in LDS Seminary and Institute as you see here. The app should look like this one here and go ahead and download it. Mine is downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And when you come to this point, it'll ask for your LDS account, username, or password. Now hopefully you remember both of those. If you do not, go to this website, ldsaccount.lds.org. Go there and you can recover either your username or your password. If you have created one before and tied it to your membership, do not create a new one. Please go through the steps of recovering your username and password and that will be the best thing to do. The two pieces of information that you need are number one, your birth date, which I hope you remember, and number two, your membership record number. Your membership record number can be found on LDS Tools. Your parents can find it under your own membership information or a member of the bishopric have access to that to give you your membership record number. If you've never created one before, you'll need both of those pieces of information as well. So go ahead and go through that first before you move on. You need to make sure that your LDS account is tied to your membership, which then can tie to your seminary account. I'm going to go ahead and log in here with a student account. So once you log in, it will bring you to this page. What this is telling you is you can switch from seminary to institute when you switch that roles. If you click on settings there, you can go ahead and switch between those particular roles. I'm going to go ahead and touch on get started. So it should bring you to this page here. This page is the same for both students and parents. First, we see readings. Let's look at that. New for the 2019-2020 school year, the reading section of the app will look like the following. As of right now, nothing is marked off. The student I'm looking at right here is a senior, and so the readings from past semesters have not yet been updated. I've been told that they will be updated, but in the meantime, if a student knows they have completed all the readings for previous years, they can go ahead and do that. Since we're studying the Gospels, however, we read the Come Follow Me reading for the Come Follow Me schedule. Let's go to New Testament. According to the Come Follow Me schedule, we should be somewhere in the second half of the New Testament. And so, for example, this week, for this week in my seminary class, I've encouraged my students to read uh, 1 Corinthians 14 through 16. Let's say they've completed that. All they need to do is touch on that button next to it. It'll take a moment to register, but now if you scroll down, 1 Corinthians 14 through 16 is gone here. So if you notice up here at the top, there is an all. So you can change between unread and all. So this is all of the readings, including the ones they marked off. These are the ones that they have yet to read here. So that's how students and parents can also mark off the readings uh, in the app. Now you'll notice for the Book of Mormon, all of the things that can be marked for reading for Come Follow Me is there. However, because we do not know how the scripture readings will be divided for either the Doctrine and Covenants or the Old Testament, you will notice there is only one thing to mark there. This student is also my son, so I can go ahead and I can mark off all of the Doctrine and Covenants readings which they did last year, knowing that they completed those as well. And so you can see it's now been recorded. If I go back, it now has those completed. Just to clarify, the reason you see 101 down here is there is one reading to mark off for the Doctrine and Covenants, 49 for the Book of Mormon, one for the Old Testament, and then 50 for the New Testament. And that's why you see 101 there. Under attendance here, let's go ahead and click on that. That exclamation point means I have fallen under the credit threshold. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on that. And in this case, I'm at 67%. I need to be above 75%. So I need to do some makeup work. So I can touch on my days absent here. And it brings me to this page to it show, where it shows me the makeup work that I need to do to make up for what was done in class. If there is no information here, you're going to have to visit with your teacher as to what your makeup work should be. You can find this makeup work in particular in the Home Study Seminary Guide for the Doctrine and Covenants that can be found in the Gospel Library app. You can complete that assignment, Unit 1, Day 1, and then turn that into your teacher to complete that makeup work. Back here on this page, we see there's no assessment score. That's because an assessment hasn't been taken yet. Down below here are some class details, where you're taking seminary and who your teacher is. Looking at the bottom here, first we see graduation. Let's touch on it. Under graduation, in this case, this person is a junior, and so they're in their third year of seminary. The check marks next to Book of Mormon and New Testament indicate that they have received credit for both of those years. All of their reading, attendance, and assessment is taken care of 
for those. If you see an exclamation point here, it means you're missing something. So you do not have credit for that particular year. That's why you have your teacher's name right there next to questions so that you can ask them particular questions related to how you can get credit. Let's go ahead and go to profile. So the first thing it will bring you to your seminary information, where you take it, who's in charge of your classes, and who your current teacher is. I'm going to go ahead and touch on family contact. Now under student contact, there is no information here listed. The parent information of this particular student have been grayed out. Students can hit edit and they can choose the type of method they'd like to be contacted by, be it text message or email. And so this merely allows the students to receive a text message or an email when the teacher chooses to send a message to the student information system. I'm not going to put one in right now. So here it has parents contact here and students cannot modify parental contact. Um, parents can, when they log into this particular part of the app, they can modify their personal contact. That's a brief overview of the student view of the LDS Seminaries and Institutes app. Please download it and start using it to have a successful seminary year.